and salutations everyone. With the hype around patch 8.2 with Rise of Ajara, I felt that now would be a good time to cover what characters we might see in Najatar. Some of these are confirmed, others are theorized by yours truly. I'm hoping to get this video out before the PTR launches, but knowing my editing game, this will probably come out after the PTR, so bear that in mind when watching this. Now, we know that such characters like Magni Bronzebeard, Anduin Wren, Jaina Proudmoore, Sylvanas Windrunner, and Varrock Sarfang are heavily involved in the patch of Rise of Ajara, thanks to BlizzCon of 2018. Whether all of these characters will be on the new continent of Nezhatar remains to be seen. But with the new information given by the recent Q&A, we know for a fact that these characters are indefinitely involved in going to Nezhatar. After the assault on Dazar Lore, the Alliance and the Horde are both recovering from battle and licking their wounds. Both factions having lost a lot of their naval power, it's the perfect time for the Naga to strike. Beginning their coastal invasions, Sylvanas obtains word that something is out in the sea, and sends her forces led by Nathanos and Lorthamar to investigate. Jaina follows by sending her own champions. As we venture into the Great Blue beyond, we find a crack leading to an ancient land, between the waterfalls. We fall into the ancient land of Nezhatar, but Ajara has laid a trap for us. So we know that Lorthamar Theron, Lord of the Blood Elves, and Nathanos Blightcaller, Sylvanas' right hand, will be leading the Horde's forces to Nezhatar, while Jaina Proudmoore, Lord Admiral of Kul Tiris, will lead the Alliance forces. It makes a lot of sense that Lorthamar and the Blood Elves would be involved, given that they share the past resentment for both the Naga, who led them to leave the Alliance, and Queen Ajara, who caused the very sundering of the continents for her very foolish dreams. It's going to be very interesting to have an Isle of Thunder effect again, with Jaina and Lorthamar back at it again with the opposition. Really curious to see how that plays out without a neutral force like Terran Zoo to get in the way. We also know that Lady Ashbane, who was recently broken out of from her prison by the Horde, is a boss within the raid. So I imagine the Horde brings Ashbane along, and she stabs them in the back, or flees, or whatever. You know what everyone expected when she joined. Anyways, here's where I throw in my own speculation of who we might see in the lands of the Naga. Taronda Whisperwind, leader of the Calderai who has recently taken on the Night Warrior, burns with vengeance for Teldrassil and those who were lost. She has quite the history with Ajara, whom she also once called Queen, and given the Horde are after something possibly linked to Ajara, it would make sense for her to kill two birds with one stone. She'd probably be joined by her Kaldorai forces as well. Malfurion Stormrage, co-leader of the Kaldorai, has recently joined his wife in a vengeful assault on the Horde within Darkshore. Assuming he and the Night Elves completed their task, he could potentially join Taranda against the Horde and Ajara. Maeve Shadowsong, leader of the Watchers, she has only recently joined the Alliance when the homeland of the Kaldorai people had been destroyed. Assuming her duties within Darkshore have been dealt with, she could finally get in on the action against Ajara. Chandra's Feathermoon, leader of the Sentinels, Teldrassil was lost and she harbored just as much anger to the Horde as her stepmother had. She's frequently been involved in the Alliance's war campaign and would be helpful in the fight against Queen Ajara. Illyria Windrunner, leader of the Void Elves who have recently joined the Alliance, fosters a deep hatred for the Horde and those who follow it. Given the powers surrounding Ajara, the Void slash Old Gods, and the history that Elves share with it, it would make sense for Illyria and the Void Elves to finally join the fray. Plus, her sister Sylvanas is deeply interested in the powers around Najatar, so it makes sense she'd also want to stop her. Varisa Windrunner, leader of the Silver Covenant, she is the youngest of the three Windrunners and has dealt with a numerous amount of stress in her family lately. While I would prefer she stays with her horrifying children, this could be another moment to show the care that Varisa holds for her sisters. Magister Umbric, secondary leader of the Void Elves, he studies the ways of the Void and has proven his loyalty and skill to the Alliance. Jaina has already placed faith in him before, and if the Old Gods are super involved in Najatar, it would make sense to send someone who knows the abilities of their foe. 
He also makes a point to not allow the Horde to ever have a grip on the powers that he studies. Prince Ferrandis. Prince of the lands known as Azuna, his people were cursed for his defiance against Queen Ajara years ago. Now, he and his people are specters cursed to walk the lands of Azeroth forever. But they've shown that they can use their curse to oppose Ajara in the past, and they have also shown that they are not tied to Azuna either. This could be an opportunity to get back at Ajara and possibly end their curse. Talia Fordragon, daughter of Bulvar Fordragon, has been increasingly involved with the story of Kul Tiris and Jaina Proudmoore. This could be her moment to rise further in the ranks and prove her worth in the eyes of Lady Jaina when fighting the Naga forces. Raden, Titan Watcher of Thunder. Once he had been ripped of his powers by a powerful Mogu named Lei Shen during a time when he had given up on his duties. He warned us of a great darkness beneath Azeroth, possibly referring to Nazoth. Perhaps this is where he went to and intends to repay us for saving him. Najira, during the Cataclysm we learned of a powerful Naga battle maiden who had earned Ajara's favor. We never got to meet her in battle, likely due to the script content. It would be amazing to see this battle maiden as a boss or a threat of some kind in Najatar. Grand Magister Ramoth, leader of the Magisters of Silvermoon, he is one of Lorthamar's close sub advisors and would very likely attend in the fight against Ajara should he be needed. Though somebody would likely need to remain behind to ensure Silvermoon's safety. Ranger General Haldoran, Leader of the Far Shards of Silvermoon, he is too one of Lorthamar's closest of advisors, and would be helpful in the fight against Queen Ajar's forces. Though again, somebody would likely need to remain behind to ensure Silvermoon is secure, he could very well reach an agreement with Risa as he had in the past to secure some kind of peace, if Risa is there too. Lady Liadrin, leader of the Blood Knights of Silvermoon, she has been actively involved as a primary leader of the Blood Elves and helped recruit the Nightborn into the Horde. If her duties within Arathi are done with, it is possible that she too could join the fight against the Naga. First Arcanist Thalrissra, leader of the Nightborn, who were once the same Highborn that were with Queen Ajara, has joined the Horde very recently. Like all Elves, they share a heritage with the Naga and a hatred for the Naga. Given her friendship with Lorthamar Theron and kinship with the Blood Elves, it makes sense that she and her people would join him in their fight against Ajara. Hubbard Grapplehammer, genius on Kazan who created many of the advancements we see in Goblin Society today, such as the Gil Goblins. Though he's been advised to not claim the Gil Goblins by his council due to the negligence case brought up over them. Given he is a Horde follower and the Gil Goblins do join the Horde in their fight against the Naga, it would make sense to include him, though he could also very well be in Mechagon instead, given the ingenuity surrounding that place. Grawl, a Shark Low whose temple had been besmirched by the Naga frequently. It is very possible the Loa would attend on the assault on Ajara's temple to pay her back for the lives she had taken from him. I hope you enjoyed this short little video talking about who we could potentially see in the Rise of Ajara patch on Najatar. I'm certain I might have added too few or too much on here. There were other ideas I had, but given the war campaign, I took off quite a few characters. You'll definitely notice I mostly included mostly the elven races at this time, as they made the most sense. I do hope we will see more than just elven races within this patch, as not just the elves have beef with Ajara and her naga. I believe characters like Anduin, Gen, Thrall, Varrock, Rexar, and Mela will be involved in the rescue of Bane Bloodhoof and the 8.2 war campaign outside of Najatar. Whether or not they'll succeed, we shall see in the future. You know full well I'll be doing much larger speculations in regards to that soon. I do want to thank people on the Lost Codex Discord and my Twitter community for giving me suggestions for who to add on here. Come and join me on Discord, we would love to have you for more discussions. May you follow me on Twitter to hear me more often, join me on Twitch to see me play the video games, though I am on break till Reforge is out, or maybe support me on Patreon. A little help goes a long way, and I would greatly appreciate it. All of those are in the description down below, as well as some other things. But until next time, my friends... See ya!